James, look, we've got to talk about this Man City game. First of all, 3-1 defeat. Obviously, we've, we've touched on it briefly in the introduction. What a wally um, I'm being made to look with the James Ward-Prowse uh, shout saying that he wouldn't fit into West Ham. I don't think I've ever seen a signing hit the ground running so much as James Ward Prowse has done. So that is excellent news and shines a light on uh, yeah enormous holes in my football knowledge and general understanding of the game. Um, I'm sort of clutching at straws here a little bit because your criticism of Alphonse Areola uh, and him being made the number one was sort of quite specific based on the fact that he he never saves penalties, in your opinion, based on one penalty shootout against Blackburn where he dived the wrong <laughs> way for every single one. Uh, he has saved penalties since. Um, and he's also, turns out that he's a sensational goalkeeper, as he is and was Lucas Fabianski, to be fair. But, you know, that decision, although Fabianski came out afterwards and, and made some pretty derogatory comments about the handling of it and, and how fuming he was and he wasn't ready to be bombed out. Ariola, he looks as good, doesn't he, uh, as Lucas Fabianski and, and he had another sort of man of the match performance really against uh, against City on Saturday. Yeah, he was class. There was that moment just before, I think it was just before our goal uh, or maybe just after um, where the ball was bobbling around the box and he's pulled off three absolute worldies to kick the ball mm. out. Um <laughs> Just yeah, he's class, and he seems to have worked on his penalty saving in the summer, uh, in anticipation of finally getting the number one shirt. So um, yeah, I'm, like you can't ask for uh, you couldn't ask for a better goalkeeper. I don't think at the moment. Um, I, I definitely I'm happy that he's in goal and not Fabianski. Um, as much as I love Fabianski, he's been you know, great for us for for many years. I think Ariola is definitely it was the right time, and yeah, I mean his performance performances so far this season, especially the one against City the weekend, kind of back that up, uh, back that decision up quite a lot, I mean. Yeah, no, I, look, I totally agree with you, mate. I, I think he's been, he's been excellent. And this one of them for this season, it probably, it's probably a, you know, a six and one half a dozen on the other, uh, picking between Fabianski and Areola. But next season, you know, Ariola will pro- there'll probably be a, a golf. The season after that, Fabianski's level is going to drop off just because it hasn't already. That was sort of what fueled my art seems a bit unfair. But ultimately, David Moyes has made the right decision there for the long term benefit of West Ham. And it might have been one of them that if he didn't make the change this summer, I'm pretty confident I'm led to believe that if he hadn't made the change this summer, Ariola would have been on- gone anyway. Looking yeah. for a move away because he wants to get in the France team, which is fair enough. So no, that that is paying dividends. That one, um, and while sad, and we thank Luke Fabianski for all his efforts. It's good, really, that we aren't looking at a situation where we're like, oh God, we've got to in- include him back in the team and go begging and say, Lucas, sorry for bombing you out. Ariola has actually been rubbish. Can you come back and help us, please? Uh, so no, <laughs> all all good things on that front. Um, I just want to tip my hat once again, James, to Vladimir Soufal. Uh, I thought he played really well. Doku is a player and a half, isn't he? Absolutely rapid, really good winger. Of, you know, as are most of the players City by, to be fair, they're all they're all pretty good. They never seem to make a bad signing, do they? But he looks the real deal. I thought uh, Vladimir Soufal did really well. David Moyes singled him out for praise after the game. He obviously did let him go that one time and he did score and, and made him pay. But I, I thought Soufal did really well. And then the ball that he put in for James Ward-Prowse's goal, great goal, by the way. Honestly, James, if Kevin De Bruyne does that, that people would be spaffing on about the ball for days and days and days because it was he, was, he, was, he made a good run anyway. The ball's rolling like forwards and away from him as he hits it in. It was such composure and execution was 10 out of 10. He couldn't have put the ball anywhere else. Just enough to get over the first defender, right in James Ward-Prowse's path, so he can run onto it and and nod it in. Really sensational and a a proper decent performance. If it wasn't Areola, I think man of the match probably goes to Vladimir Soufal that worked really hard and did a good job on, on the whole. 
on containing a, a player who's going to terrorise some Premier League right backs this season. Yeah, I thought he was outstanding. He's been good all season, really. You know, he's, mm. he's he's been in the team, and um, I thought that performance um, was probably up there with one of his best. Uh, his assist, though, like you, you're right, it, it was a great ball. But what impressed me most about it was that when he received the ball from Bowen, he had a lot of space to run into. Previously, and we've seen it so many times with him, he kind of just almost runs straight to the byline, just gets just get, get get to the byline. Whereas this time, if you look at it again. He kind of drifts in more central, in more into the space, mm. uh, which then allows him to play that ball. If he'd have gone out wide, carried on, used that space out wide, and maybe gone to the bar and maybe allowed, gave, like, saved a little bit more time to, for more players. Oh, Siri's kicking off. Sorry. Excuse me. I couldn't hear what you said. Uh, Siri agrees. <laughs> um, <laughs> then, uh, then. He probably doesn't put that ball in by that time. Defenders are caught up, but he allows himself by drifting in just ever so slightly, sets himself up, up nicely for that cross. And it was uh, it was a good finish, but uh, perfectly weighted ball into the box of their defenders. But yeah, overall, it was a great a great performance from him. And there's not much you can do with Doku's goal. Um, sometimes yeah. I do get frustrated when players kind of back off uh, wingers like that, when fullbacks back off and they kind of allow them to run at them. Because you're, right. you're asking for trouble nine times out of ten. You're asking <clears> for the player to cut in and have a shot, which is what Doku did. Um, but he did it a few times throughout the game, but had Doku on toast a few times and kind of stopped mm. him from putting a cross in or blocked a shot or, or showed him out wide. That one time he tried doing it, didn't work. Doku was just a little bit sharper than him. Yeah. Uh, which you yeah. would expect because the, the kid's class. So, um, yeah. But yeah, it was a good performance. Really, really good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the decent goal from James Ward Prowse. A um, couple of bits sort of outside of the game. Um, Paolo Di Canio before the game. I went to see him on Friday night, Jonesy at the at the Brentwood Centre. He's my absolute hero. Honestly, I love him so much, and it was it was quite funny actually, to be honest, because you know I'm 32 or nearly 32, and yeah. It's a peculiar thing. Uh, it's sort of a bit of a running joke between me and my girlfriend at the moment that um, if we ever had children, the first one's being called Paolo. And so, like, so much so now that whenever it's referred to, she just, she it, rather than saying, oh, yeah, if we ever have a kid, she just calls it Paolo. <laughs> 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 um yeah, and, and you sort of think, oh, at 32, some of those feelings might sort of die down a little bit or whatever. So I was lucky enough to go down there on Friday night to Brentwood. I don't know if anyone listening did. Tony Cotty hosted it. Absolutely great evening. Um, yeah, and sound sound system wasn't ideal, so you sort of couldn't hear everything. But um, it was just amazing. He's just got such an aura. He's just got such an aura. Uh, and obviously he was at the game on Sunday as well. Um, he come out before the game, led the crowd in bubbles. And I, I remember thinking, Jonesy, because he was there, wasn't he, on the last night at Upton Park. He was part of that sort of procession and group of players that come out on the pitch. And I remember being really underwhelmed and a bit disappointed by the lack of a reaction he got then. He obviously got an applause and a big cheer. But I think, you know, everyone's got that player at West Ham who... They love more than any other, right? And mine, Paolo and Carlos Tevez, are really sort of give give me a it's a proper would also almost be a toss up between them two. Obviously, Carlos Tevez wasn't there for for quite as long, um, but yeah. And so, what what was it like basically seeing Paolo back again at the stadium? Because I, I was just sort of come away from it afterwards feeling really weird. Like I was 32, got the train back on my own, uh, and I was just like, "Ah, oh, I get what an, what an inspiring man! What a what a bloke! What a way to think about things! The way he executed his career and saying no to Man United a couple of times, the bond he built with West Ham fans is so genuine." Um, yeah, I just I don't know, mate. It was just really weird coming away feeling like a ten year old kid again, age 32. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. It was good seeing him out on the pitch before the game. I only, I literally just caught the last twenty seconds of him being on the pitch before he went back into the tunnel. 
Um, but you knew he was making an entrance because suddenly you could feel like the ground like get louder and louder before we'd even got into our, um, started walking down to our seats. Um, it was good to see him in the flesh. I wasn't quite as close as you were on Friday night, but um, yeah, it's great to see legends come back. And um, but I, 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 I'm just thinking about what you said about the last out of some part. I, can get, I can't understand that because there were so many legends in attendance mm. that everyone's going to have an affiliation towards certain legends and are going to love legends. But if every single legend that evening got the same applause, like it would have like Paolo's different gravy. Isn't Paolo's it? different. Yeah. But you had so many there in attendance. So I can kind of get it, but, but yeah, no, it was, it was great seeing him on, on Saturday. Um, yeah. I love the bloke just as much as you do, mate. Um, I think so, we yeah. should do that. Cool. I think we should do that one day. We'll just do like, you know, we'll rank the West Ham legends. Cause yeah, he's, yeah, it was amazing. Honestly, just amazing. Like hearing from him in, in the flesh doesn't come over much. Um, so yeah, yeah, great stuff, great stuff. Um, Lucas Paqueta, seen going over and hugging Pep Guardiola and one of his staff members prior to the game. Weird, weird. I, I, I don't know if there's any sort of more reasons for it or anything like that. Obviously, Paqueta has moved to Manchester City, fell through, uh, in the summer. Uh, or sort of at the last minute amid this ongoing betting probe. Thoughts, James? Well, I mean, if that deal was was as close as we were led to believe it to be, then the likelihood is that Pep Guardiola and Lucas Paqueta will have been in the same room at some point in the summer discussing a potential deal. So it's not like he was just like walking up to a stranger. Well, they have accepted before. an offer, did they? No, but these things happen. Like the players and other managers, they meet or agents meet, and players and they. It would have happened. It would have happened at some point. I would not be surprised if it did. Um, but, um, but yeah, like, I, I don't think much of it. Like they, these people, they will work in the same industry. They they will have friends. They will have acquaintances that they know. Um, Fair you would. Wouldn't have wouldn't have questioned it had there not been a potential deal in place in the summer. You would have gone, oh, look, they must know each other. No, you would. I yeah, would have done because I'd have gone, no. how do they know each other? The, the, but the, the way I see it is that had had he almost down tools or not been playing as well as he had last season, back in the last season, mm. and the the deal falling through had clearly affected his mindset, then maybe I'm a bit, a bit like, mate, like steer clear of this. Like, you don't, like, you, you're not. Um, you're not doing yourself any favours here. Mm. But in fact, he's been the complete opposite. He's been good this yeah. season. Um, it hasn't affected him, um, which, you know, I think that he deserves a lot of credit for because a lot of players would have seen a, yeah. a, a, a transfer to Man City fall down, uh, break down at the end of a summer transfer window and throw their toys out the pram a little bit or be quite annoyed. Yeah. But he's he's not. He's just gone, right, okay, well, I've got, you know, I play for West Ham United and I'm going to continue giving my best for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, you know, if he wants to go and hug Guardiola, go and hug I mean, if I met Guardiola, I'd probably hug him. I think he's like, <laughs> like he's, I think he's a great manager. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's what it is, I think. I don't really see anything in it. Yeah, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. Um, well, the other the other two goals, and like I say, we obviously touched on Doc. It was it just annoyed me. Do you know what I mean? I I, I told you I had to pick a game that I wasn't going to be able to go to uh, this month um, because of my work stuff. So I was like, oh, you know, I will pick City because we will lose that. It's a write off, da da da. Um, and so I was at work. I had it on at work, obviously, and. Um, I went to the toilet at half time. I come back and it's one all. Just as I sat back down at my desk, it's like 47 minutes on the clock and it's one all. It's like, what the hell? Absolutely infuriating. It just, yeah, it just seemed a bit inevitable, really. Oh, you knew they were going to score. I mean, it took me f into what? But why did like seven, so quickly? Six, seven minutes into the into the second half before I realised it was one all because I I got back to my seat maybe like a minute and a half into the second <laughs> half. Um, didn't look up at the scoreboard, obviously, and kind of just sat there standing there. 
chatting to people around me and kind of carrying on watching the game. It was only when I looked up to see. I, I, I try and like, look, I try and avoid looking at the the time for as long as possible in the second half, particularly when you're playing right. big teams and you're still in the game. And then I kind of just peered, I looked up at the screen and saw it was one on, and I literally turned around and went, "When on earth did that happen?" And they were like, yeah. "What happened? Like ten seconds in the second half? How did you miss that?" Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was a bit of a blow. That like. It was a dub, bit of a double whammy for me because then it was only what, what fifteen minutes later that they that they yeah. went two one up. So I was only just getting over the fact that I thought we were winning for ten minutes of the second half, only to, only to realise that we actually weren't. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but nah, they're always going to score, aren't they? Like it's not like when yeah. they do, it's like okay, well. That was a well worked goal. Like and all three of their goals were good. Um, so yeah. it's like, well, what do you do? It's nothing. No, not many teams in the world were, can stop Man City when they're like that. I mean, they absolutely battered Real Madrid last year. Like so, you know, if you if you just keeping the score down at three one, then I think you've got to be pretty happy with that. I think. Yeah, no, nah, fair enough, mate. Yeah, uh, Bernardo Silva and Erling Haaland putting the icing on the cake. Erling Haaland did a weird celebration. There were suggestions that he was doing, like the he sort of he like fell over, and then Bernardo Silva sort of pushed him over as well. There were suggestions they were mocking De Canio for his pushing of the referee, but I also think it was like a weird mockery of Doku's opening celebration, which was also peculiar, but. To be honest, it all quite it all quite bored me. To do you know what I mean? Uh, did you see it? Didn't make look at it, it. Didn't see it. Uh, didn't see it. No, nah, overrated. But um, yeah, overall, I, this is what I don't like, James. I've said it. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Um, I don't like the fact that the Premier League now. And look, I, I, I like Man City primarily because they're fans and whatever. But I just don't like the fact now that you lose 3-1 in the Premier League and you just shrug and go, well, yeah, that's how it is. It's like, mm. everyone's like, oh, the Premier League's the best league in the world and takes a mickey out of all the other leagues because, you know, so one, they're so one way and the Bundesliga, I'm sure every other German team, perhaps other than Borussia Dortmund, plays Bayern Munich and thinks, well, this is a write-off. And we all mock them for that. Same in France with PSG. Um you know, uh, uh, and we all we all mock them and say, like, shows what a naff league it is. But I think Man City's dominance and the fact that we're we've lost three one at home. You know, we've won a European competition last season. We're in Europe's secondary competition again this year. We're playing Man City, a, a team of that level, in a decent competitive league should have should give themselves a chance of beating last season's champions champions at home, shouldn't they? Do you know what I mean? So the fact that we're just sort of shrugging, and everyone is really, all fans are going, yeah, free hit, right off, we only lost 3-1. 3-1 is a fairly comprehensive scoreline to lose by in a normal game. I just think it's a bit of a shame, really, that that's the way the Premier League's gone, and that's why I didn't go, quite frankly, because it's just, yeah. I see what you're saying, but I think the Premier League... Has never seen a team like Man City before. Like it's, they're they're well beyond the levels that Man United reached when they were winning it all in the in the nineties and in the early two thousands. But that's what I'm saying. Mid to late two thousands. Better then. Um, yeah, but that's why people are more likely to go. Well, that's how it is. Like, but I think also the reason why a lot of, there's there's a lot more people are quite accepting of this result is because that it. The manner in which it happened wasn't imba- it wasn't an embarrassing defeat, which we've been so used to. We mentioned it last week. So used to against City at London Stadium, where we've been battered five nil. Games yeah. over in fifteen minutes. Yeah. Um, this time, and particularly in the last few years under David Moyes, we've played City at home and gone. At least we know we're going to give them a game. Um, and if we do lose, then you know it's not going to be easy for City. And it wasn't easy for City for seventy six minutes. Mm. You know. So I think that's why a lot of people are a bit more accepting of, of this one. Just going, well, you know, we 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 can take a lot of positives out of that game, despite losing. You know that we're on the right track. Um, we're taking a performance like that against Man City to, to Anfield this weekend. Going, um, going, okay, well, you know, Liverpool are, are miles off where City are. So there's the game going to Anfield, which we've only won once in what 55, 60 years. 
going, you know, we're probably good enough to take a point from there now. Because that's where we are. That's what that performance um, suggests. The evidence is there that we're good enough to go to places like Anfield now and, and get something. Um, and gives the likes of the best team in the world uh, a game for 76 minutes. So I think that's why people are a little bit like, yeah, well, it's been worse before. That wasn't actually yeah. that bad. Um, and we, you know, had we taken a, a, a result, which is what I said earlier, had we taken a result, no one would have complained. City, City wouldn't mm. have complained. Uh, Pep Guardiola may have found, found something to complain about. He often does um, when his team doesn't win. But the fan, no fan would have been at, would have come away from that if we'd have, even if we'd have drawn, gone, wow, like, that was lucky. So yeah, it's what it is. But I, I get I get your original point. It's um, with them in the league and the, the, the level that they're at, it is less competitive. But let's like, I know we've been yeah. joking about it for the last few weeks, but we're not competing with Man City this season. No, quite. They're not the no, team that we're competing same. with. No, we're going to be te- we're competing yeah. with Brighton, Villa, Newcastle, etc. Yeah, no, I quite agree with you, mate. I quite agree with you. Well, on that point, Liverpool away next week. Uh, you'll be doing uh, an opposition view later in the week. That podcast will go up separately as we've started doing this year. So, yeah, we'll try and wedge in some backer to polar content uh, at this stage. By the way, little update. Uh, Chase sent another chasing text, got in touch with the other half Serbian podcast. Um, and yeah, just waiting to hear back. Still nothing. So it could be a Will Pew and James Jones giving you the lowdown on back at Tapola later on this podcast. But uh, Jones, you'll have the opposition view for Liverpool uh, later on this week. Liverpool are third. They're also unbeaten, four wins, one draw, zero defeats. West Ham's sixth place in the Premier League. Uh, three wins, one draw, and one defeat. Three, one defeat, two Man City. But it's been a great start to the season. No one can deny that. And it's been very much a surprise. So, yeah, positive feelings after five games at West Ham United.